So I'm making my gemstone here just by giving myself a little bit of information. And the parts that I'm making, I am going to have different values. So each one is gonna have different information. Each different cut shows different details. And you are welcome to follow along with me or do your own thing on your own paper. What if yours ends up being a little bit more abstract and not exactly like this? Am I gonna be upset with you? The answer is no. I want you to enjoy the practice. I'm giving it some organic edges at the top, like I see in the picture. Now, what size should you be doing? Um, well, you can decide, um, but I think that you'll be happier if you go bigger. So what I'm working with is my purple. So in my palette, I'm just gonna have a purple mixed up over here. And I'm just going to put a little water in my tray. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm not quite liking how that's going to turn out. There's going to be areas where you're using lots of water. And there's going to be areas where you use very little, very, very little water. And that's going to be the trick to making different values. So this one right here that I'm pointing to is, it's almost a complete white. It just has a smidge of purple in there. So what I'm gonna be doing is that's gonna be practically clear water with just a little bit of purple in it. These areas right here that have more uh, little, little smidges of, of white with a little bit of purple, here is an important thing for you to know. Let's put that homework away. Thank you. Anytime you are working with sections such as this, you must keep areas dry where you don't want your water to bleed. So if I wet this entire thing, the whole thing's going to become one color. You can't really control it. And that's the point of this exercise. I'm challenging you to understand watercolor paints and you will make mistakes. And I am 100% okay with that. So what I am going to do first, my paintbrush does not come to a nice fine point. I specifically chose this one because I wanted you to see that you can work with this paintbrush. But if you have one of those nice paint brushes that has a really beautiful point, you're going to enjoy this a little more. For someone like me who's using a paintbrush that does not come to a very fine point, watch what I'm gonna do at the bottom. I'm just gonna show you an example. I am very lightly going to tickle my paper with my paintbrush. Is that line nice and thin? Yes, but is it thin like I want it to be? Not quite what I want, but that's okay. We can work with that. If you haven't gotten your paintbrushes yet, just remember that that really thin paintbrush is gonna be your best friend. All right, so I'm just gonna start with this little really light section here. I'm actually going to paint the whole thing that extra, extra light color. Why am I going to do that? I'm going to call that a wash. I'll write that on my paper. And
And this is just getting some paint on the paper. Will I have to dry it before I move to the next step? Yep. But here's watch what I do. Just putting a little, little bit of paint in my palette. I'll pan out a little bit more <laughs> so you can see. I want just a tiny, tiny bit of that purple or that violet. Tiny, tiny bit. So that when I put that on my paper, it almost looks white. And I'm gonna do it to the whole thing because I can always add more. You probably can't even see the purple on my paper. It's so light. Now I'm trying to learn to control my paint, but what if the paint that you're putting on rolls off to the side? It does happen. And one of the best ways to fix that is with a good old fashioned piece of paper. A, not a piece of paper. Paper towel is what I meant to say. Right now I've controlled it pretty well. The paper that I'm using is the same as what you are using. It is not watercolor paper. I must use very little so that I can control that paint. So right now I have some little areas in here where it's starting to pool. Sometimes when you have that problem, you have to do a lift. for you guys for sure so what I do and remember I like to show you the right way to do things and I will show you the wrong way when you use this kind of paper you're going to run into struggles it's okay how can I fix it if it starts to make a pool take a little piece of paper uh, paper towel don't ever rub your paper. That's a big no-no because you will then take the favorite paper fibers off by doing that and your painting will not look right. Can I work with it? Yes, but it frustrates people. So if it starts to pool, I just take a little paper towel and dab, dab, dab. And now I can take my paper and I can fan it, I can blow on it, and I can give it just a little time to dry. If I want to go and add more paint to only one little section, I can't until the paper dries. Otherwise, it's gonna all bleed together. Is that really a problem? Not necessarily. Sometimes you want to, to, it to bleed together, but I want you to learn <coughs> how to control your watercolor paints. So in this case, my paper's still really wet. And right now I'm not seeing enough of the purple that I wanted. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more but I'm not gonna be able to keep it to one small section. What I like to do when I use this kind of paper and I'm working really, really small is after I have done a section, I put my paper inside a book and I smash it down if it's dry, of course, and that's going to help it to kind of flatten out a little bit.
But I want just a little bit more of that purple in there. The smaller you work with these paints on this type of paper, the, um, the more it's going to require you to stop and let it dry. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate on watercolor paper so you guys can see the difference. This is 140 pound paper. You are working on 90, at least 90 to 98 pound paper. This is 140 <coughs> pounds. So I'll go ahead and make a little example here. And again, I'm working very small. I drew a little too dark, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to erase my line so I can still see the ghost line, but it's not quite as dark. This is something you'll hear me say a lot, ghost lines. They're still there, you just can't quite see them as clear as you did the first time. But they're still there. I work with ghost lines a lot. All right, so now watch the difference between um, my 90 pound paper and 140 pound paper. The difference is, is this paper is going to absorb the water and it is not going to create puddles. Can you still get puddles with 140 pound paper? You bet. But it's going to be much easier to control your paint.
Now, once I have wet an area, I can just touch it with my paintbrush with a little bit of watercolor on it, and look, it's going to spread. What if I added too much and I don't like how it looks? I'm gonna wad up my paper towel and I'm gonna bring it to a nice little point. And now I'm gonna use that to do a lift. If you've let your paper dry, it's lifts do not work. Only if your paper is wet. So I'm just gonna wet this a little bit. And if there are areas I want to remove, I make sure it's wet. And I'm gonna press down my paper towel and it is very subtly removing some of that paint. Okay, so you can see the difference pretty clearly in front of you. I use the same paints, same amounts. The one on the left has indentations because my paper wants to curl. Because you have paper in a sketchbook, it might be holding a lot better, but because my paper is singular, it has nothing else underneath it. It's really not wanting to absorb that water. So it has no choice but to curl. And that's okay. I would close my sketchbook when it's all dry, flip it over, let it dry with that pressure on top, and that'll help make it nice and flat for you for tomorrow. We have another four minutes or so of painting time. I'm now just going to add a tiny bit of black for the areas that I want to create shadows. And I'm just going to tickle the surface with my the very, very tip of my paintbrush. I'm just gonna very, very lightly apply that paint. And I'm pulling my paintbrush toward me. I'm beginning to add values to my painting. Those darker areas. I'm paying attention to the small details that I see. Sometimes it looks like little scratches on the stone. Do you wanna show those? Absolutely. Oh, I see an area where I messed up. I'm going to wet it and do a lift. Just add some water to it. And I can see this whole area should have been lighter. And watch how I fixed it. It's forgiving. What if you do that with heavy black 
paint. Can you still do a lift? Yes. Um, or we can try to improvise. Improvising happens often in art. Mistakes happen often in art. Keep in mind that when you're painting, you are painting your version of that gemstone. Try not to get wrapped up in making, um, especially as a beginning painter, try not to get wrapped up in perfection. I have lots of perfectionists in my classes and they will obsess over details if they don't look right. They wad up their paper and throw it away and start over. Try to be nice to yourself and understand that yours may not look exactly like the picture. It's just your version. One more minute and then we'll begin cleaning up. Tomorrow when we come in and we begin working on your paintings again, they'll be dry and it'll be really exciting because it's, it's a new day, almost like a new painting. You may clean up 